report. Okay. Fortunately, we lost uh, Vincent Taylor, ruptured his Achilles. So we haven't made a transaction yet, but we will at some point. Sorry, D-Led. I do not know. How how um, how intense do you look at the end of practice? Because uh, Coach Lever said that shows toughness. You know, I had 11, 11 good uh, two minute drills here today at the end. It's, it's easy. It's like that's what I say. We're gonna find out a lot about our, our guys and our team this week. Um, it's easy to have energy the first couple of days. You know, this is kind of the last of that. There's really two ramp up periods. That's what I was getting at D led yesterday. Um, you know, we're trying to do what's best for the players, and there's, there's studies that show as you ramp them up, right? You have the first ramp up last week and then the first two days of pads. As you're, as you're pushing the volume, you're, you're asking these guys to, to uh, go through and um, as you're adding reps. But it, it's a good test, and certainly at the end of practice, that's what you want to see. It's easy to have, have energy and juice, whatever you want to call it, at the beginning of practice, but these games come down to the, to the end of the, game, the fourth quarter in the NFL. When uh, a D tackle now, what does that do? Uh, well, we got a lot of guys in there. We got we got ten guys right now in camp. We were heavy at D tackle. We had eleven. Now we're at ten. Those guys are competing. Uh, you know, we'll wait till I watch the practice film. But some of those guys are starting to flash. We'll see if they can stack days. Any, any sense of when that happened? It's, it's a non-contact play. Right? It had nothing to do with. Uh, you know, we've had. You know, we continue. I mean, guys, the guys are going to have something, right? But we, we were pretty healthy. Uh, you know, Brian had a thing. He was back out there today. And that was a non contact injury on Vince Taylor. Yeah, the only reason I think we didn't see it, it didn't, we didn't see it, I think, during practice yesterday. But that's why I was just wondering if it happened. You got to watch a little bit better. It happened. I mean, you guys, got the, the heat's getting to you. Don't let the grind tell players, don't let the grind wear you down. <laughs> the grind, the heat may be wearing y'all down. It was right in plain sight. Was it? Yeah, it happened in the first team period. Uh, Lorenzo Carter, this year, so far, what do you expect to uh, hope from him throughout the year? Yeah, yeah, well, you know, Zoe, Zoe's the old guy in that room, and he's not that old. Um, him and, and Ade, and those guys are working, and I, I think Zoe can bring a lot as, as that outside linebacker and a, and a rusher. He's got a lot of length. I really like his work habits. Uh, been very pleased with Zoe so far. When it comes to ultimately making a decision between Drew Dahlman and Matt Hennessy, whenever that happens, what do you need to see from them to solidify your, that decision? Yeah. Um, obviously, the phys physical stuff you need to see uh, inside, but it, but a lot of it is command. You know, the really great centers. I mean, put Todd McClure in the ring of honor. And, and knowing from everything I heard about Todd McClure, and you could you could go back and argue when you when and Matt would tell you this, uh, when he was a young player, having that veteran center, the guy had command, that helps. I mean, it's they run the show out there. You need it right down the middle of your offense, your center and your quarterback. If they got command, you got you got a good shot. Um, seen Ben Jones do it. He helped change the culture in Tennessee. Came there, a guy that could that could anchor the middle. And we're looking for somebody that's got that kind of command. Obviously, Alex Mack did it here. Did it at a high level. That's such an important position. So command, obviously, minimum drive requirement. Be able to block your guy. But we want to see that presence as well. This might be a little bit far out when it comes to this question, but because of the unsettledness that you have on the offensive line a little bit, do you maybe play Jake and Chris more in the preseason to get a rhythm? All right. Maybe you would. Okay. So, uh, go on record. You know, you got to make a judgment where your team at, where your team is at, and where we're at, and what we need to do. We need, we need to continue. These guys need work. You know, they, the quarterbacks need to feel the pocket. There's a risk every time you go out there, but we're not going to sit here and live in our fears. And Marcus, Dez, they need to feel that pocket. You try to simulate as much as you can, and you have these pressure periods where you want them to feel it, but at the end of the day, they know they may get bumped into, and you're trying to avoid that, but they're not getting tackled. It's a little bit different when, when it's live, and they're live. So um, and our guys need to. And you know, we'll, we'll adjust how many snaps, depending on how the camp's going and, and, and you know, where we think we're at with that position. That's something you learned maybe from last year a little bit in terms sure, of lessons learned every day. But a lot, I mean, hindsight's always easy to go back and not to play martyr like, oh, I should have done this. Is it? We know why we made the decision where we were at last year. We had some veterans, didn't feel good about depth in a lot of spaces. That, that first game in Tennessee, you, you would hope to see a lot more improvement. Guys had actually taken a snap. We had so many guys that never taken an NFL snap. We had to find out if we had any depth with these young guys and, and felt very thin at spots and some veterans. and. Um, 
you look back at it and we've got more competition. I feel better about our depth. We've got more guys that have, that have played. And so we, we expect, uh, you know, we, we need to be ready to go week one. When it comes to quarterback leadership styles, it feels like Marcus is a little bit different than Matt's. Is, is that accurate? Yeah, it's very accurate. The, the worst thing you do, I mean, it, there's nothing more fraudulent than a quarterback tries to come in and act like somebody's not. It's, there's a reasons why everybody that's played with Marcus loves him. Um, you got these uh, gurus out there, uh, you know, these quarterback gurus, and, and they may try to tell a quarterback he's got to act a certain way, and they, they tell him as a little kid to do this or that. But guys try to add something or not, they're frauds, they get out of there. Let them lead in their own way. And he's got real good leadership. Matt has his own style. Ryan Tannehill has his own style. Ryan Fitzpatrick, the list goes on. Matt Hasselback, Jason Campbell, Mark Brunell, Doc Collins, they're all different, Josh. What's Marcus's style? Watch him every day. So um, why don't you ask his teammates? I, I like his style because and, and, he's himself. He seems like such a nice guy. I know Matt had a little bit of an edge. Does Marcus have an edge when it's needed, or is that needed? That, that's such a ridiculous, like, surface, like, personality thing. Guys, that's just ridiculous, Josh. Like, an edge. What kind of edge do you have? What do you edge do you think Matt had that Marcus doesn't or Desmond doesn't? Hollering, hollering at folks, you know, making sure. I don't know. That's what I'm asking Call you. Call it an edge. I mean, there wasn't a lot of that last year. I mean, Matt was his own guy. Marcus is his own guy. Like I said, Tannehill is his own guy. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know what that f fake edge is. Is there some kind of bravado you want us to tell him to do? No. No? Yeah. So, ask his teammates.